Thank you for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel for another Bible study. We are both delighted and thankful that you have taken the time to partake of this lesson, and I hope it will bless you as it has me in the preparation of it. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for providing another opportunity for us to gather virtually to learn how we can be more like you and live a fuller life that glorifies you, benefits others and ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We are going to Philippians chapter four, verses one through nine. Uh, we'll be there for a while. Philippians chapter four, verse one through nine. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord and my beloved. He says, I entreat you, uh, Yodiah, and I entreat Syntychus to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companions, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. And do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes, surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there be any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And verse 9 says, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Now, we are coming from what defiles a man in Mark chapter 7, verse 14 through 23. We spent quite a bit of time there. And now we are in Philippians chapter 4. We we'll eventually park in verse 8 at some point. But right now, we're going to take a slow walk to verse 8 for a while. We're beginning a series of studies that deals with peace. Peace. That's something that I'm learning is so important in life. If you don't have peace, nothing else really matters. And Jesus died so that we would have peace with God and not only with God, but with ourselves and with our fellow man. Now, Jesus says in the book of John, uh, chapter 14, verse 27, he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. There's a difference between the peace of the world and the peace that Jesus gives us. There is uh, the peace of the world, uh, which is a peace of escapism, of avoiding trouble of refusing to face things, of thinking thoughts that are unrealistic. In other words, you develop a world of your own. It's a peace that looks as, uh, uh, as though everything is going all right. A peace that, that is looked for through pleasure and satisfaction and contentment the absence of trouble, the positive thinking, the denial of problems. That's the world that's offered by evangelists such as Joel Osteen, 
just to mention one, but there are other ministries. There is the peace now of Christ and of God. This is a bosom peace, a peace that is deep within each and every one of us that believe in Jesus. It is a tranquility of mind, a composure, a peace that is undisturbed by circumstances and situations. It is more than a mere feeling, even more than attitudes and thoughts. The, the, the peace of conquest is one of these types of peace that we have. John chapter 16, verse 33 says, I have said these things to you that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is a peace of conquest that's important for every believer. It is the peace independent of conditions and environment. The peace which no sorrow, no danger, no suffering, no experience can take away from us. And then there's the type of peace that is the peace of assurance. Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. It is peace of unquestionable confidence, the peace with a sure knowledge that our life is in good hands. And I'm not talking about all state, but the hands of God. It's the unquestionable confidence that all things will work for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. All state ensures property and valuables, but God ensures that no matter what happens to us, he will use it for our good. Then there's another type of peace, the peace of intimacy with God. And, and in our, our, our verses for this week, uh, uh, just to pull out two of those verses, Verse six and seven, Philippians four, chapter four, verse six and seven, that uh, teaches us of a peace of intimacy with God. It reads, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and with supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I feel like just stopping right there for a minute and meditating. But since I'm, I'm trying to teach the class to you and I'm not sitting here, I did it a little while ago when I was reading through for the last time. But oh, what a blessing it was to my heart to know that I have an intimacy with God that will guard my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. Now, along with showing us by the examples of peace, Jesus maintained, uh, he shows us how we are to love uh, as a demonstration of the peace that is within us. On the cross, while having the sins of the entire humanity on him, Jesus still displayed agape type love for his enemies even. He cried out to the Father, forgive them, for they didn't know what they were doing. They had condemned Jesus, but in actuality, they were condemning themselves. I believe when we do things that we shouldn't do, and in a sinful way, uh, we are crucifying Jesus anew by our actions. And I also believe that Jesus is still at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for us by saying, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. It's difficult, if not impossible, to be at peace with our enemies 
if you are controlled by what they're doing to you, especially if it hurts you. That's also very true with those you love. When they do something that hurts you, we forfeit our peace by not having a mind to forgive them. The source of our peace is always born or began in reconciliation. Its source is found only in the reconciliation produced by Jesus Christ. Peace always do uh, has to do with personal relationships. Our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with God, and our relationship with our fellow men. We must be bound, woven, and joined together with ourselves and with God and with our fellow man. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 and 14 says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Colossians 1 and 20 verse 21 says, And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated, and hostile in mind doing evil deeds. We have to admit that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet alienated and hostile in our minds to God, Jesus, on the other hand, through uh, shedding his blood for us in our place on Calvary to pay the price for our sin was also reconciling us to God. And thereby there's nothing that, that we can do to God that will nullify the blood of Jesus. Now, another good thought comes to mind. If the blood of Jesus can keep our relationship with God intact, then surely his blood is able and to keep our relationship with one another intact. Surely his blood is able to keep our relationship with ourselves intact so that when Satan shows up, his blood will show out in our lives and help us to know that we have peace with God and there's nothing that Satan can do or say that will separate us from the love of God. I, 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 I'm sorry, I got a little excited there. Peace is the point of this whole passage in Philippians chapter 4 verses 1 through 9. It is the peace of God. Verse 7 of Philippians 4 chapter says, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That is so important to me. That verse reminds, has reminded me this week that, that there's a peace that so often we forfeit that surpasses all of our abilities to understand. And it will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I need something or somebody guarding my heart and my mind because I'm so fickle and I can so easily get off track. And what, when, whenever we get off track, whenever we forfeit the peace of mind and, and the, uh, the, what's guarding our minds and our hearts, then we are bought the great blessings that God has for us. 
verse 9 says, remind, verse 9 reminds us that the peace of God shows the presence of God working in and through us. Philippians 4, 9, the English Standard Version says, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. When we practice the peace that God gives us, that there's a word earlier, reasonableness, which in essence means that we have a certain calmness, an unusual calmness as we go through adversity. And here's the shout call. That declares to our enemies and everybody around us that God is present with us. There are six steps that believers must take to maintain the peace of God within our hearts and our lives. And they are all outlined in Philippians chapter four, verses one through nine. If uh, we as believers fail to take these steps, we grieve both the Lord and fellow believers and those who have made a special contribution in our lives. Those who, are, who look at us and receive joy because they can see Christ at work in us. In other words, we are their joy and we are their crown. There are some people at Mount Sinai that are my joy and my crown because I can see the Lord working in their lives. Philippians 4 and 1 says, Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy, my crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. Unfortunately, when a believer loses his peace with God, several things happen. They become self-conscious of their depraved condition. They become embarrassingly shy. They don't want to be around other believers. They'll slack off at attending worship experience. They'll slack off at attending Sunday school, Bible study. They'll feel guilty and perhaps discouraged and even defeated. They become grouchy and critical, murmuring and grumbling and, and divisive. In other words, they become the type of person or we can become the type of person that nobody really wants to be around. But if we practice the peace that God gives us, then people will enjoy being in our presence. People will, 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 will seek us out in a crowd because they know that we have a spirit that will, will overflow into their lives and add something to their lives by giving them a word of encouragement. And then another thing that happens to people that have lost the peace of God, they begin to slip back into sin. And the peace that they once had with God and man becomes disturbed and restlessness grips their soul. Their restlessness stirs them with unused energy into being a troublemaker or into sin, or else it plummets them into despair and defeat, feeling that they have failed again and that there's no hope for them. And therefore, they feel unworthy and unable to walk victoriously with God. To put it in uh, so that we can better understand it, what I'm saying is when we squander our peace with God, I choose not to use it for whatever the reason might be. And usually it's because 
of our own mistakes or errors in life or evil desires that Satan knows and moves someone to punch our weak button. We end up feeling that someone in our orbit or in our life have, has irritated us. So we blame them and use them as our excuse to not be at peace with them and to not enjoy the peace of God. This is the importance of this passage, the secret of peace, the peace of God himself. We must remember the source of peace, which is God through Christ Jesus. Peace means to bind together, to join, to weave together, to be knitly, closely knit together in fellowship. It means that a person is bound, is woven together, or joined together with themselves and with God and with others. The goal is to have peace with self and with God and with others. The Hebrew word shalom means freedom from trouble or the control of trouble and a lot more. It means experiencing the highest good and enjoying the very best possession, possessing all of the inner good possible. And I'm a firm believer that what's on the inside will show up on the outside. It means wholeness and soundness. It means prosperity in the broadest and the greatest sense, especially in the spiritual sense of having a soul that is blossoming and flourishes. You can bubble over with joy when your peace flourishes. God, the God, but God, the God of peace will be with you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your comforting help during the recording of this video. We pray that you will give the increase so that what was said and heard will make sense and be useful in our walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's all I've got for this uh, Thursday night Bible study. We pray that you will be blessed by it. Uh, we pray that you're continuing to uh, wear a mask and practice social distancing or physical distancing and that you're uh, practicing good sanitary habits by washing your hands often. And uh, I pray that God will continue to keep you safe and covered in the blood of Jesus. Not only will it cover you from sin, but it, the blood of Jesus is able to cover or keep you in this pandemic season. May the love and the peace of God be with you always. So long.